Today let us discuss in detail about the anemia case, how to take history, what all you have to examine from top to bottom, what are the differential diagnosis, how to investigate and important treatment for the anemia. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Prep Ladder. Namaste students, today we will be discussing one important case for both undergraduate and postgraduate students which is very common in India especially in the rural parts of India that is anemia. Anemia will be kept as a main case for both undergraduates as well as postgraduate students and today let us discuss in detail about the anemia case, how to take history, what all you have to examine from top to bottom, what are the differential diagnosis, how to investigate and important treatment for the anemia. Uh, here is a patient by name XX, age about 22 years and she is a female, occupation uh, she is a student and she is from Bangalore. History is given by the patient and it is reliable. Coming to the chief complaint, complaints of tiredness since 3 years. So she says actually tiredness is present since childhood but that tiredness is increased last since 3 years that is the chief complaint, that is the only complaint. Usually the complaints in anemia students is the symptoms in anemia is very non-specific. You cannot say that because patient is having this symptom, patient is having anemia. They can have a tiredness, weakness, exertional breathlessness, giddiness, faintness, tinnitus in the ear. So like this non-specific symptoms uh, anemia patients will come to a doctor. Okay, but no symptom is very specific to anemia because they are having this symptom, you can say that this is anemia. Come to the history of presenting complaint. Complaints of tiredness and exertion since 3 years. She also gives history of giddiness and standing for a long time. And she also says giddiness while going outside the hot sun. And relieved on taking the rest. So, two symptoms she has, tiredness and giddiness. So, what are the points in the history we will ask in a case of anemia? I have asked some of the important points, negative history in this case. Then I will discuss in the case of anemia, pertaining to the iron deficiency anemia, megaloblastic anemia, normocytic normochromic anemia, and in pancytopenia case, and in iron deficiency anemia, what are the points you will ask in the pertaining case, okay? What are the positive and negative symptoms you will ask in the history, I will discuss, okay? In this patient, some of the points which I ask in the history is, she says there is a, a no history of dark yellowish coloration of the urine, okay, since childhood. So, because she says the symptoms are since childhood, okay, so we have to suspect, uh, okay, probably a genetic inherited anemia like hemolytic anemia, okay, uh, where they will have a jaundice. But in hemolytic anemia, even though they have a jaundice, yellowish discoloration of the eyes, because it is an indirect bilirubin elevation, that indirect bilirubin will not be excreted in the urine. So, urine color will not be yellow color in the hemolytic anemia. Same like our patient also says, there is no history of darkish yellow discoloration of the urine since childhood because it is an indirect bilirubin which will be elevated in the hemolytic anemia. But she gives history of yellow discoloration of the eyes, okay, sometimes. So, probably whenever she is having a hemolysis at that time, she is developing the indirect bilirubin elevation that is producing the jaundice in the so, she is saying sometimes there is a yellow discoloration of the eyes, but not the urine. No history of vomiting or abdominal pain. Okay, this history is important because abdominal pain and vomiting, if the hemolytic anemia patients, if they develop cholelithiasis, okay, they can develop abdominal pain and vomiting. And one more thing, in a case of anemia, okay, the abdominal pain is important because a chronic abdominal pain, diarrhea and diabetes can be seen in chronic pancreatitis and in chronic pancreatitis there will be a trypsin deficiency and calcium deficiency which can produce B12 mole absorption, B12 mole absorption which can produce a megaloblastic anemia. So, abdominal pain history is important pertaining to that. No history of discoloration of the feces or skin. So, the if there is any obstructive jaundice, she gives history of yellow discoloration of the eyes. If there is any obstructive jaundice, if the biliary uh, duct is get obstructed, then the stool color will be pale colored because you need stercobilinogen for the stool color to become yellow. So, only in obstructive jaundice, stool will be pale colored. But here, our patient is not giving any history of discoloration of the feces because probably she is having a hemolysis and hemolytic anemia. She says history of constipation since 10 years may not be related to the present complaint, the present anemia, the history of constipation, it is not related to that. She gives history of leg swelling, notice uh, 10 years and especially while walking and if she takes rest and it is relieving. 
she is history of edema probably i feel this physiological edema because she don't have any other symptoms of heart failure like a pnd orthopnea that symptom she is not giving okay but she sees she says history of ankle swelling is there uh, notice since 10 years especially while walking and it relieves on taking the rest while keeping the and also while keeping the legs up there is no history of bony pain so you are talking history of bony pain because in a acute leukemias okay they can have anemia and they can have a bony pain because of the marrow expansion within the bone okay the bony pain is a bony pain you have to ask no history of loss of appetite or no history of loss of weight so this is is important loss of weight or loss of appetite because malignancies see a lung see a breast okay they can go on prostate carcinoma in a male they can go on invade the bone marrow producing myelopathic anemia and they can present with the anemia so history of loss of appetite loss of weight is important in this case no history of blood in the stools okay or history of hematemesis so this history is important whether they are losing blood from the gi tract okay so they can lose blood from the gi tract so in the upper gi bleeding the causes like acid peptic disease esophageal varices malaria with syndrome and cs stomach history which can bleed from upper gi tract you have to ask similarly from a lower gi tract they can bleed from hemorrhoids ca colon polyps diverticulosis so these lower gi Uh, whether they are having these diseases which can produce lower GI bleeding is there you have to ask another important history in india especially agriculture country like india occupation if there are agriculture is the barefoot walking will produce hookworm infestation which they can lose the blood in the gi tract so she gives history of palpitation while walking climbing and running probably she is having a less hemoglobin that is the reason for her palpitation a high output state which is producing the palpitation especially an exertion while walking climbing and running she also gives history of excessive sweating there is no history of cold or hot intolerance this cold intolerance and even a weight gain history if it is there or any facial puffiness history that is important okay because a myxedema myxedema can produce a normocytic normochromic anemia very rarely it can produce even megaloblastic anemia so symptoms of hypothyroidism like facial puffiness history of weight gain cold intolerance is important no history of increased micturition during night time okay so initially polyuria can be a feature of a chronic kidney disease in the initial stage so that is the history of increased micturition during night time important chronic kidney disease can present with a normocytic normochromic anemia so it has the symptoms here there is no history of bleeding gums okay bleeding gums history is important because acute leukemias especially monocytic leukemias can bleed from the gum okay so history of bleeding gums is important in a case of anemia there is no history of imbalance while walking and there is no history of burning or tingling sensation in both the upper limb or lower limb this history is important okay because posterior column and peripheral nerve will be involved in a b12 okay vitamin b12 deficiency so they will have peripheral neuropathy symptoms tingling of the hands burning sensation in the legs and imbalance while walking especially during the night time so that history is important in any case of anemia no is there difficulty in swallowing because uh, especially in a middle aged female like this in iron deficiency anemia there will be a post cardal web formation which can produce dysphagia known as plummer wilson syndrome so that is the history of difficulty in swallowing is important in this case so is there travel to tropic not relevant in this case because she lives in a tropical country like india okay probably is there diarrhea is important because chronic diarrhea is a manifestation of a tropical sprue are a gluten sensitive celiac sprue where a mal absorption of b12 and folic acid can occur so is there diarrhea is important in this case she says uh, she gives history of uh, fever every month in march month okay till 10 standard and is there of respiratory tract infections a hemolytic anemia like thalassemia so they can develop repeated respiratory tract infection because of the less immunity okay they can develop the infection inanition so they can develop that she gives every year she gets fever in march month as i told before there is no ist symptom suggestive of hypothyroidism or hypopituitarism huh? hypopituitarism tss can be a less which can produce a less thyroxine which is required for hemoglobin synthesis so hypopituitarism like hypotension hypoglycemia those symptoms are not there which are suggestive of hypopituitarism which can reduce the tss level no ist a pruritis pruritis probably hepatitis okay infectious hepatitis they can develop aplastic anemia so that is why the pruritus history may be important in this case of anemia no is there mass per abdomen because lymphomas uh, leukemias they will have uh, huge splenomegaly and hepatomegaly 
so where patient may themselves come with a mass per abdomen so that symptom is important in no is suggestive of mass per abdomen no facial swelling as i told before to rule out symptoms of hypothyroidism no abdominal distension fluid accumulation in the abdomen ascites especially in a male alcoholic patient cirrhosis can develop anemia there are so many ways cirrhosis can produce anemia like esophageal varices hyperspinism alcohol as a depression action on the bone marrow zeev syndrome because of the hemolysis of the rbcs okay and mal absorption of the nutrients on the gi tract these are the cause of anemia and liver cirrhosis so you have to ask history of any abdominal distension no history of visual disturbance b12 can produce optic neuritis okay and even ckd patients can have retinopathy so history of visual disturbance you can ask she says she had a fungal infection of the leg during winter season and it relieved with applying the ointment probably infection as a told common in thalassemia so she developed infections fungal infection and fever every year so as i told before there is no history of ga loss no history of melina and there is no history of losing blood from any other parts of the body in the form of epistaxis hematuria or hemoptysis so she is not losing blood from any part of the body in the form of epistaxis hematuria or hemoptysis history of abdominal pain as i told before to rule out coliitis cholelithiasis and chronic pancreatitis and no history of raynaud syndrome especially in a sickle cell anemia autoimmune hemolytic anemia they can have raynaud syndrome so history of raynaud syndrome is important so this is some of the negative history which you are asking this patient now i just want to summarize and tell in each the type of anemia what are the points uh, you want to ask uh, in all the anemias for example iron deficiency anemia students it can develop due to a defective intake number 1 or defective absorption from the gi tract from duodenum it will be absorbed for example if any gastric surgery has been done with the duodenum is been cut then iron won't be absorbed then increase blood loss for example uh, they may lose blood from the gi tract or a female like her fertile period they can lose blood from the menstruation so they can lose blood the minor area so blood loss and then increase requirement uh, adult male and a post menopausal female doesn't require uh, any increased requirement whereas a fertile female like this during pregnancy requires a increased requirement a child growing child requires a increased requirement and during pubertal time requires a increased requirement these are the four main causes where iron deficiency can occur okay so one is the decrease intake decrease absorption increase loss and the increased requirement so relevant to pertain into that factors suppose if you suspect iron deficiency anemia these factors you have to ask in a female especially menstrual history we have asked in her in her menstrual history is normal i'll tell in that when i come back to the menstrual history so any increased bleeding menorrhagia metrorrhagia you have to ask during one menstrual period a female will lose 30 mg of iron one menstrual period a female will lose 30 mg of iron then repeated pregnancies and miscarriage because pregnancy requires iron okay it is a iron increase requirement condition so repeated pregnancy means the mother will develop the anemia whether she had any repeated pregnancies or miscarriage you have to ask in a female in a reproductive age okay i am discussing female in a reproductive age then diet like any other category even if they take less diet okay especially iron is more in a non vegetarian food non vegetarian food green leafy vegetables okay a decrease intake in the diet or gi loss gi loss can also occur in a female in a reproductive age group so gi loss symptoms you have to ask hematemesis melina hookworm infestation those things then whether blood is losing from any other part of the body like hematuria epistaxis and hemoptysis you have to ask then whether patient has undergone any gi surgery as i told duodenum iron is absorbed so if she has undergone any gi surgery iron won't be absorbed properly and whether they are using chronic aspirin injection you have to ask this is pertain into the iron deficiency anemia now that is iron deficiency anemia in a female in a reproductive age group iron deficiency anemia in a male and a postmenopausal female in a adult male and a postmenopausal female they are not growing they don't require iron but unless and proved otherwise a adult male and a postmenopausal female will develop anemia only if they lose blood from the gi tract so all those gi tract losing blood conditions you have to ask which i told esophageal varices acid peptide disease ca stomach malady with syndrome upper gi tract lower gi tract ca colon diverticulosis polyps okay and hemorrhoids these things you have to ask an upper infestation then in a male and postmenopausal female uh even ga surgery and whether they are losing blood from other sources like hematuria epistaxis hemoptysis you have to ask and diet history and chronic aspirin injection 
in iron deficiency anemia in a third category like infants and children students where they are growing an increased requirement is there for them you have to ask a dietist is important whether they are taking proper diet or whether they are prematurely born a prematurely born baby will develop iron deficiency anemia and if the mother is having iron deficiency during pregnancy the baby will also develop iron deficiency and where mother had a multiple birth which can develop uh, anemia in a child so multiple birth history you have to ask and gi loss like any other case also you have to ask in this infants and children whether they are losing blood from gi tract and any blood loss from the other sources like hematuria epistaxis hemoptysis there you have to ask so these are the history wise you have to ask in iron deficiency anemia now let us come to the megaloblastic anemia the race is important student in megaloblastic anemia what race religions in the hindu they are pure vegetarians so megaloblastic anemia will develop in a pure vegetarian food because b12 is present only in non vegetarian food maybe maybe some dairy products like curds milk it may present in a very less amount but mainly present in a non vegetarian food so race is important religion is important in megaloblastic anemia history then family history some of the b12 deficiency can develop it can run in families very rare inherited diseases okay let us not go detail into that symptoms okay then cns symptoms as i told in b12 deficiency paresthesia you have to ask tingling and numbness and loss of imbalance during night time that is to you have to ask then is there diarrhea b12 is absorbed in ileum whereas folic acid is absorbed in jejunum so is there diarrhea like tropical sprue gluten sensitive enteropathy can have diarrhea so is there diarrhea you have to ask in a megaloblastic anemia then pregnancy increased folic acid will be required in pregnancy or a recent delivery so you have to ask pregnancy and recent delivery because folic acid is required in a high quantity in a pregnancy and lactation then residence in tropics she resides in tropics because tropical sprue can develop diarrhea and can produce beetle deficiency so residence in tropics is important then especially in megaloblastic anemia drug history is important because some of the drugs like metformin and proton pump inhibitors can produce b12 deficiency whereas there are anti folate drugs which will produce which are antagonists to the folate like methotrexate pyrimethamine tramtrin sometimes even anti tubercular drug nitrofurantoin tetracyclines can act as a anti folate antagonist not only that sulfadiazine cholesteramine trimethoprim will inhibit the absorption of folic acid okay that is why drug yeast is important especially in the megaloblastic anemia then any previous abdominal operations or disease like ileocecal tuberculosis or a crohn's disease or whether any operation has been done with ileal resection you have to ask in the megaloblastic anemia because b12 is absorbed in the ileum okay now pertain into the b12 deficiency okay i want to ask some other points in the history the gastric cause of b12 deficiency is or absent intrinsic factor for example if the patient has undergone a total or a partial gastrectomy intrinsic factor will be totally deficient so, so they develop megaloblastic anemia or if endoscopy shows atrophic gastritis previous evidence of atrophic gastritis because parietal cells will undergo atrophy parietal cells will secrete the b12 so they can develop b12 deficiency and whether there is any history of zollinger lesen syndrome by endoscopy and blood test investigation zollinger lesen syndrome because of the decreased ph the trypsin won't get activated and trypsin is needed for the cleavage of the b12 from the r binder then only b12 can clog with the intrinsic factor it can be absorbed in the ileum b12 cannot be cleaved from the r binder if trypsin is not there and trypsin will be inactivated by zollinger lesen syndrome decrease ph so whether patient is suffering from zollinger lesen syndrome you have to ask in the history for a b12 deficiency or any bariatric surgery is to reduce weight whether they have undergone or you have to ask and proton pump inhibitor is one drug which can produce b12 deficiency apart from metformin so then whether patient is having pernicious anemia that uh, you have to it's autoimmune disease which is confirmed by auto antibodies so that is you have to ask okay and then food absorption the cobalamin absorption because of the intestinal causes like stagnant loop syndrome then whether patient has undergone any ileal surgery is 1.2 meters of ileum if it is resected then they can develop b12 deficiency whether she has undergone ileal resection you have to ask then tropical sprue then whether patient is having a fish tapeworm okay whether diagnosed to have fish tapeworm so that you have to ask because fish tapeworm will produce b12 deficiency then gluten enteropathy because it can reduce the b12 absorption from the ileum that is to you have to ask 
Then chronic pancreatitis, as I told before, in chronic pancreatitis, there will be decreased trypsin and calcium, which will reduce the B12 absorption. So, chronic pancreatitis, we ask in our abdominal pain, we ask and diarrhea, which is a triad of chronic pancreatitis, abdominal pain, diarrhea and diabetes mellitus. Then history of uh, whether she is suffering uh, history of exposure, HIV history is important because 10 to 35 percent of the HIV patients will have B12 deficiency. So, history of exposure you have to ask because they can develop B12 deficiency and any radiotherapy and graft versus host disease. Okay, If they have undergone any bone marrow transplantation, they can develop B12 deficiency. So, any history of radiotherapy, radiation therapy, graft versus host disease. And other drug is metformin as a load apart from proton pump inhibitor, which can produce B12 deficiency. That you have to ask. And whether she is working, she is a student. Whether they are working in a OD setup, a nurse working in a OD setup because of nitrous oxide inhalation can develop B12 deficiency. So you have to ask the occupation, whether they are a surgeon or a OT technician who is a nitric oxide as an anesthesia, they can develop B12 deficiency. So this is still you have to ask in a B12 deficiency. Coming to the folic acid. Folic acid in the diet is goat's milk. Those who consume only goat's milk, okay, especially in Andaman and Nicobar, they consume gold milk, sorry, goat milk. So, goat milk does not contain the folic acid. So, in the diet is goat milk, you have to ask, okay. And mall absorption, as in beetle deficiency, like tropical sprue, gluten enteropathy, that can also interfere with the folic acid absorption. Then, excess utilization and loss from the body. For example, in pregnancy, you need excess utilization, okay. And prematurity, the baby, the baby, premature baby requires high folic acid, 10 times mo more than the normal adult folic acid requirement in a premature baby, okay. Then hematological conditions where there is an increased turnover of the RBCs like hemolytic anemia especially, you, you require more folic acid. They can develop folic acid deficiency, okay. Because in these hematological disorders, the folic acid which is utilized for the coenzyme function after that, it is not reutilized properly. That is why they are more prone to develop folic acid deficiency. Okay, so you have to ask that point. Then some inflammatory conditions can produce folic acid because of the increased requirement, chronic inflammatory conditions because of the increased requirement of the folic acid. And if the patient is suffering from homocysteinemia and homocysteinuria, what happens is homocysteine is converted to methionine by utilizing the folic acid, and they can develop folic acid deficiency. Those who have a Congenital homocysteinemia and homocysteinuria because homocysteine is converted to methionine by utilizing the folic acid, they can develop folic acid deficiency. Then, increased utilization and loss can occur in congestive heart failure and liver disease patients. So, because there will be increased urinary excretion from the damaged liver cells which contains the folic acid. Okay. So, whether patient is suffering from any liver disease or whether patient is having any congestive heart failure symptoms, you have to ask because increased folic acid utilization and loss can occur. Okay. And lastly, as I told, folic acid deficiency, there are some drugs which will act as antifolic drugs, the pyrimethamine, triamterine, methotrexate, nitrofurantine, tetracycline, antitubercular drugs. Okay. And uh, there can be a decreased absorption of, by some other drugs like sulfadiazine, triamterine and cholesteramine. Okay, cholesteramine, triamterine, sulfadiazin will decrease the absorption of folic acid from the GI tract. So, drug yeast is very important in a megaloblastic anemia. So, these are the points which you have to ask in the detail in the history about the iron deficiency anemia and megaloblastic anemia. For example, if the patient is having uh, normocytic normochromic anemia, what are the things you ask in the history pertaining to the anemia? So, blood loss. Acute blood loss, if the patient uh, met with an accident, lose 1 liter of blood, they are more, more prone to develop normocytic normochromic anemia, acute blood loss. Is there any history of trauma, producing acute blood loss, you have to ask. Then bleeding tendencies, suppose if they have a leukemia so with the low platelets, they can bleed, okay. So, you have to ask them whether they have increased bleeding tendencies, the ecchymosis, petty case are there, you have to ask. Then nocturnal polyuria, as I told CKD, they can have normocytic normochromic anemia, nocturnal polyuria. Facial puffiness, you have to ask in the history, and bony pain. Acute leukemia can have a marrow expansion, so patient can have a bony pain. So that point you have to ask in the history. Then symptoms suggestive of mixed edema can have normal setting normochromic anemia, facial puffiness, cold intolerance, then hypopituitism. So okay. So again, TSH will be less, they can produce a normal setting normochromic anemia. Then suppose if anemia is associated with thromocytopenia and neutropenia in a pancytopenia case, what are the things you will ask? Okay. So, here you will ask the diet history, 
on occupation history because occupation some of the, the industrial toxins can produce aplastic anemia, B12 deficiency can produce pancytopenia. So, dietary is important. So, exposure to chemicals, drugs and radiation is important in a pancytopenia because they can develop aplastic anemia. Then history of any bony pain, as I told malignancies, the blood malignancies can develop the aplastic anemia and pancytopenia. Then history of fever, night sweats, weight loss and pruritus are the symptoms suggestive of lymphoma. Lymphoma and a chronic malarial hyperreactive splenic syndrome, okay, and then the alcoholic liver cirrhosis with portal hypertension can have a massive splenomegaly and hyperspinism which can produce pancytopenia. So, diseases which can produce hyperspinism like cirrhosis, lymphomas and a chronic malaria you have to ask in the history if the patient has pancytopenia in the history. Coming to the hemolytic anemia, what are the points you will ask in the history? Like our patient, the symptoms she told she started since 3 months or 4 months of age. So, some of the inherited hemolytic anemia symptoms begins at a very young age. So, age of onset, the sex, for example, GCSPD deficiency is X-linked recessive, males will be affected. So, sex is important, age of onset of the symptoms is important and race, GCSPD deficiency is common in the Middle East countries, okay, in India it is not common. So, race is important in hemolytic anemia. Then occupation, because some of the toxins can produce hemolysis, so occupation is also important. Then jaundice, our patient is history of jaundice. So, history of jaundice is important, hemolytic anemia, they love jaundice. Then color of the urine and feces. Though they have jaundice, the urine color and the feces color won't get altered because you, here it is the interred bilirubin which will be elevated, which won't excrete it in the urine. So, urine won't be yellow color. Then history of abdominal pain, as I told before, because they are more prone to develop cholelithiasis. So, it was history of abdominal pain. Family history. So, some are autosomal recessive, some are excellent recessive, some are autosomal dominant. Okay, so you task family history in the case of hemolytic anemia and previous history of repeated blood transfusion. Okay, our patient is giving that history since 6 months uh, every 20 days she is getting a blood transfusion. So, previous history of repeated blood transfusion history is important. Then symptom suggestive of disorders causing autoimmune hemolytic anemia. So, this is, is important. Some other disorders will produce autoimmune hemolytic anemia. For example, a cytomegalovirus infection, Epstein-Barr virus infection. HIV infection, the viral vaccines, then chronic lymphatic leukemia, hematopoietic stem cell transplantations, okay, and uh, inflammatory bowel disease, lymphoma, the drugs, methyl dopa, penicillin, piperacillin can produce it, okay, and ceftriaxone can produce the autoimmune hemolytic anemia. So, the, the diseases which produce autoimmune hemolytic anemia. You have to ask in a case of hemolytic anemia, whether they are taking those drugs, whether they are exposed to those drugs or any viral infection is there or they are suffering from HIV or CLL or lymphoma or SLE. You have to ask those symptoms in autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Then whether hemoglobinuria occurs in relation to sleep, for example, paracetamol nocturnal hemoglobinuria, PNH, usually the hemoglobinuria occurs in night, even daytime also it occurs, but night time they give the history that there is a hemoglobinuria. Our hemoglobinuria occurs due to cold, for example, cold hemoglobinuria. Our hemoglobinuria occurs due to excise, for example, sickle cell anemia. During excise, they will undergo dehydration and hemolysis will occur in that sickle cell anemia. So, with excise and with drugs, for example, GCSPD deficiency, the drugs will produce a hemolysis. So, which are the drugs we will ask in the history in GCSPD deficiency? Antimalarials like chloroquine, primaquine, quinine, dapsone, proguanil. Antibiotics like ciprofloxacin, norfloxacin, nalidixic acid, antibiotics like sulfamethoxazole, sulfadiazine, the sulfonamide antibiotics, so cotrimexazole, paraimonosalicylic acid, paracetamol, naphthalin, all this will precipitate the bleeding, the hemolysis in this is deficiency. So, drug history you have to ask whether that can precipitate hemolysis. So, these points we will ask in the history and drugs, chemicals you have to ask and Raynaud's phenomena in hemolytic anemia as it was sickle cell anemia and some of the autoimmune hemolytic anemia will have a Raynaud's phenomena. So, symptoms such as Raynaud's phenomena you have to ask in the hemolytic anemia. So, these are the points in the history students detail you have to ask in the case of anemia pertaining to the etiology. Okay. So, we asked all those points in her. Okay. And now let us go on to the further history, the past history in her 
She has been diagnosed to have thalassemia at the age of 3 months of age student in CMC well at 3 months of age. There is no issue of tuberculosis, epilepsy, diabetes or hypothyroidism. No issue of any radiation exposure. So, there is no issue of any radiation exposure. This is the past history. Coming to the family history, there is a consanguineous marriage between the father and the mother. In the father's side, till now nobody is affected from the history wise. From the mother's side also nobody is affected till now. The parents had one abortion after her, after she was born and then one more male baby is there not affected. So, she is the only one who is affected and mother and father is a consanguineous marriage. Second degree consanguineous marriage. And she told the father and mother were investigated for the genetic analysis and both are carriers. Because thalassemia is an autosomal recessive condition, it is not manifested in mother and father. And because she has got the gene both from the mother and father the affected gene, she is a homozygous. Though autosomal recessive, it is manifested in her. So, this is a pedigree chart students. Then drug and medical history, as I told in the history, what are the drugs you will ask in a anemia, in a megaloblastic anemia, folic acid deficiency, GSPD deficiency, what are the drugs you should ask in the history I, I discussed. She is taking tefarazirox. 400 mg BD, the dose of tefarazirox is 20 to 30 mg per kg body weight you have to keep, okay. And she is taking 400 mg BD, okay. The two tablets in the morning, one in the night since 10 years, okay. As a gelatin therapy, they are giving her. And she tells uh, every once in 20 days, she is getting a two bottles of blood transfusion since three months of age students, okay, right. Because here the disease developed in the childhood at the three months of age, okay, and manifested like that, and she requires blood transfusion, it is beta thalassemia major. This is the thalassemia major, okay, and they have investigated and it has come as a beta, beta thalassemia major, which I will discuss at the end of the uh, case discussion detail about the thalassemia. Coming to the personal history, she takes mixed diet. Diet history is important as I told because B12 deficiency will occur in a pure vegetarian food takers, okay. Non-vegetarian food only contains the B12 apart from curd or some dairy milk where little amount of B12 is present. So, diet is important and goat's milk as I told, if they consume only goat's milk, they develop folic acid deficiency. No history of addictive habits and still she is not married. The menstrual history, very important in the case of anemia as I told before, especially in iron deficiency anemia. Age of menarche in her is 12 years. No history of excessive menstruation, normal flow, regular cycles, 3 days per 28 days. Okay, so these are the ISTE students. So, because here uh, she gives ISTE since 3 months of age, she is getting the blood repeated and she has been investigated and she is getting an iron charity therapy. Okay, so she is having a hemolytic anemia, okay, hemolytic anemia, probably they investigated later and they have found what type of hemolytic anemia she is having. Okay, right. So, in the case of anemia students, top to bottom, what all you will examine pertaining to the each anemia, iron deficiency, what you will see, megaloblastic, what you will see. Normocytic anemia, what you will see, hemolytic anemia, what you will see, we will see from top to bottom. Patient is conscious oriented, moderately built and nourished, blood pressure is 100 by 70, right arm supine position, pulse rate is 76 beats per minute, regular, normal in character, she is afebrile.